Hi, my name is Lily King. I'm an adjunct instructor here at St. Leo University, and I'm also a doctoral student at the University of South Florida studying philosophy and religion. So today I'm going to talk to you guys about Peter Abelard. Um, if you haven't heard of him, that's completely okay, because most people haven't. Um, he's a 12th century medieval philosopher. Um, kind of, most people don't know, but he's sort of responsible for beginning what we now would call the scholastic tradition kind of the uh, philosophical and Aristotelian method of inquiring about daunting religious mysteries and theological mysteries. Um, so he's kind of contentious in the medieval tradition because he was a heretic um, and because he had a really, really saucy affair um, with a nun. Um, so that could kind of get you in trouble if you're part of the church, I suppose. Um, so up until the last 20 or 30 years, there hasn't really been a lot of attention paid towards Abelard as a major figure throughout the Christian tradition. Um, and I'm trying to change that. So what specifically interests me about Peter Abelard um, relates to his ethics, um, but even more specifically, the connection between suffering and virtue in his kind of philosophical schema. So as with all things Abelard, um, he tries to give a very philosophical definition of what suffering is. A lot of times when we think of suffering, we kind of relate it to examples. So we might say, you know, suffering is when we have to endure loss of a, lo a loved one or when we're in pain or when we're sick. Um, but these examples don't really tell us exactly what the essence of suffering is. Um, so Abelard wants to really get at that. So his definition of suffering is this. It requires struggle against the will. Um, and it can take two different kinds of forms. We can have passive suffering and we can have active suffering. Passive suffering occurs when we endure circumstances that are contrary to the things that we want. Um, so an example of this might be when I want my grandmother to live, but she dies. Um, we can't control that situation, we can't control that circumstance, but we have to passively endure it. Active suffering kind of looks like when we have a volition or we will something that is contrary to our desire. So it's active in the sense that we do have control over it. So an example of this, um, this isn't personal at all. <laughs> I want another glass of wine, um, but I choose not to have that glass of wine because I know that in order to be a good temperate person that I need to forego having that extra glass. Therefore, I choose something that's contrary to what my desire is. So, both of these instances involve doing something that's against what we want um, or enduring something that's against what we want or desire. So how does all of this relate to virtue? Um, why is it relevant? So for Abelard, he believes that Virtue is not something that can be natural. Um, what do I mean by that? Essentially, virtue requires effort. It requires doing something that is strenuous or difficult. Um, so for instance, Abelard does not believe that somebody can be naturally virtuous. So for example, he thinks that someone who's asexual could not rightly be said to have the virtue of chastity. Why? Because they never actually lust towards another person or lust after another person. Thus, their kind of disposition sort of coincidentally aligns with what God's will for them is. Doesn't actually require any effort, doesn't actually require any struggling against the will. So, in order for there to be suffering in Abelard's philosophical schema, or sorry, in order for there to be virtue in Abelard's philosophical schema, there has to be suffering in some sense. Um, and it only works precisely with the definition that he's offered that I kind of talked about before. So then, this is kind of good news because all of us suffer. Um, all of us experience suffering of the passive sort. And hopefully if we're developing virtue, experience suffering of the active sort. Um, and it's that suffering of the active sort that really gains us merit in our striving towards salvation. Well, as far as Abelard's concerned. So, now you can suffer with purpose.